Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Sierra Leone's former president could face life in prison after being hit with treason charges. Ernest Baikaroma denies involvement in an alleged failed coup against his successor's government late last year. Also, Sudanese paramilitary chief Hermeti is in Kenya as part of his first regional tour since his forces began battling the army last year plunging the country into deadly conflict. And Togo hopes to keep digging deep when it comes to soybean cultivation. In less than a decade, it's become the biggest exporter of organic soybean to Europe, and the sector is expected just to keep delivering. But first, former Sierra Leonese President Ernest Bai Karoma has been charged with treason and accused of involvement in an alleged attempted coup last November. Now, Karoma headed up the country for 11 years from 2007. He's been under house arrest since early December and denies any links to the alleged failed to take over bid at the end of last year. Our regional correspondent, Justice Baidu, tells us more. Now, Sierra Leone has been in this instability since uh, June 2023, uh, after the election in which uh, the current president, uh, Julius Madabio, won by a very, very slim margin. In that election, it was heavily contested uh, by the uh, opposition party, which is also the party of uh, Mr. Kuruma, who is the former president. That election had also been contested in, in the, 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 the verdict from uh, several international agents who had supervised the election was also that um, several infractions had occurred in that poll. Now, in August, there were heavy anti-government protests in uh, the capital, Freetown, in which uh, several top shots of uh, Sierra Leone's military were arrested on allegations that they were plotting to oust the government at the time. Now, when the last incident happened in November, uh, in which the the the, the, the president, the government, uh, said it was an attempt to 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 actually stage a coup, um, Mr. Uh, uh, Kuruma released a statement immediately um, rejecting the 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 attempt and said that it was something that shouldn't have been supported at all. But in the days after that, the arrest that happened uh, following the investigations included many, many uh, people who are said to be uh, former security uh, personnel of Mr. Koroma. Mr. Koroma says he has no hand in this at all and he's ready to go through the full trial. So what does all this mean for Sierra Leone's political stability and its future going forward? It means a lot. Uh, you need to remember that this is a country that is yet to fully recover from many, many years of a brutal uh, civil war that killed uh, uh, several hundreds, uh, several thousands of, of people. Um, it only just also came out of the Ebola pandemic that occurred, and, and Sierra Leone was one of the hardest hit, uh, along with uh, Liberia and Guinea. And this is a country that is, according to, even from the results from the last election in June, it shows that the country is heavily divided. When Mr. Kuruma appeared in court today, his lawyer said that this was going to be a very bad precedent that was going to set the tone for even more division for the country. The government says it is intent on prosecuting this matter to its very lack to serve as a deterrent to other people who may have intent of uh, uh, destabilizing the very, very uh, small West African country. Justice Baidu there for us. Now, the paramilitary chief on one side of the power struggle that plunged Sudan into deadly conflict last April was in Kenya on Wednesday on his first trip abroad since that fighting erupted. Kenyan President William Ruto met with Mohamed Hamdan Daglo, also known as Hemeti, amidst a regional push for a ceasefire in the Sudanese conflict. Our Olivia Bizot tells us more from Nairobi.
The head of the paramilitary rapid support forces, Hamedti, has come out of isolation this week. He's been to Djibouti, to Uganda, to Ethiopia, and now his most recent stop has been here in Kenya, where he met uh, President William Ruto this Wednesday in Nairobi. Now, this uh, recent trip to uh, Kenya comes just the day after he signed the so-called Addis Ababa Agreement, uh, in which he committed to an unconditional ceasefire as well as humanitarian support to civilians who've been devastated by almost nine months of conflict. Uh, now, Hemeti says that the main reason behind these visits is to find solutions to the ongoing war in Sudan. However, analysts uh, say that the real reason behind these multiple uh, trips is to secure regional support and political legitimacy. RSF uh, has made significant gains in recent weeks. Just a few weeks ago, uh, they captured the capital of Jazeera, which is a breadbasket of Sudan. However, RSF has also been accused of war crimes and crimes against humanity, as well as an ethnic genocide in the West Darfur region. Now, our team uh, here in Nairobi has recently published a report about that ongoing uh, violence, which you can find on the France 24 website. Livia Bizo there for us. Now, the United States has made it clear that it's not going to formally recognize Somaliland after the breakaway Somali territory said that Ethiopia had agreed to acknowledge its self-declared status in exchange for sea access. This week's deal between Somaliland and Addis Ababa sparked protests in Mogadishu on Wednesday. An outraged Somalia has said that the agreement amounts to an assault on its sovereignty. Meanwhile, Ethiopia has defended the port access deal, saying that it's broken no laws. However, the government has not yet confirmed that it's agreed to recognize Somaliland's independence. And South Africa's genocide case against Israel in the UN's International Court of Justice is coming for criticism from Washington. The White House has echoed Israel's dismissal of Pretoria's take on the nature of its bombardment of Gaza. The State Department said that it does not see Israeli acts against the Palestinians as constituting genocide. Whilst the National Security Council has slammed the submission before the ICJ, calling it meritless and without basis in fact whatsoever. Around 22,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israel's retaliation over the cross-border attack in October by Hamas extremists, in which over 1,300 people were slaughtered. In less than a decade, Togo has become the biggest exporter of organic soybeans to the European Union, surpassing Ukraine and India. Now, the industry is booming, with 30,000 producers and nearly 300,000 tonnes of the crop produced in 2022 alone. The government's planning on keeping up the cultivation of a very lucrative sector, as our correspondents report. Over 160 kilometres north of Togo's capital, Lomi, an experimental farm in Atakbami tests the quality of organic soybean seeds to reduce losses for farmers. In two weeks, we can start the harvest. Currently, you can see that the seeds are consistent. The plant has yielded a good harvest. Responsible for almost half of the organic soybean exports to the European Union, the agricultural company provides farmers with more resistant seeds and biofertilizers. Agronomy engineer Yao Toyo helps farmers to access financing and increase crop fields and yields. The producer agrees to respect our organic production policy, and as a company specializing in organic value chains, we provide them with agricultural technicians who support them in mastering production techniques. In this area alone, the engineer works with close to 10,000 farmers grouped in cooperatives. Together, they collect 20,000 tons of soybeans for export and plan to reach two tons per hectare. I started three years ago. The following year, I increased the production area. This crop really brings in profit. Although soybeans were not produced in Togo 40 years ago, they have now become a focus for the Togolese government. The MIFA is an innovative financial system for the agricultural sector that aids farmers to access bank loans. 
We will mobilize even more resources so that starting from the 2024-2025 campaign, we can invest in seed production and fertilizer production. The ultimate goal is to expand production on a larger scale by launching Togo's first soybean processing plant in its primary industrial hub. The country plans to export 250,000 tons of soybean derivatives each year to West Africa, Asia and Europe. And Ugandan production of the legendary homebrew Tonto risks going flat. More drinkers have been turning to cheap, industrially bottled beer as authorities move to crack down on home brews rather than crack them open. Take a look. The bananas have been peeled before Mzi Janabo steps into a wooden boat to mash them up with his bare feet. The sweet juice is filtered and sprinkled with grains of sorghum and then left to ferment for 12 to 24 hours. The result, an alcoholic beverage Ugandans call tonto. Ndjanyabo with his family is among the few Ugandans who have kept this old tradition of local beer making alive. I started learning about the local brew way back when I was still young from my father. They would brew like how we have done it in the boat, but they would ferment it in a pot made from clay or using a calabash. Today, we leave the alcohol to ferment in the boat, and once it matures, I read to Mbarara to sell it. But the legendary drink isn't the threat, as authorities move to ban the production of what are considered illicit homebrews. Christine Komuhengi is a Tonto seller. In spite of the threats to her business, she still thinks it's sustainable. I have been educating my children through selling alcohol, local brew, Tonto now. Two of my children are in school, but the others have not started school. But I have been making a living and educating my children through selling alcohol. In order to sustain the practice, Janabo has been involving his family, including his little children, so they can learn the art of making the local brew. For him, the earnings for making and selling Tonto have helped him look after his family over the years. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us, though. Do so again if you can. Till then, take care.